Sunday Guardian is a very reputed newspaper. It comes every Sunday and it appears only in two cities that I know of, in New Delhi and Mumbai. It is read by people who want to know what exactly is happening in the government, the policy, the directions and so on. My good friend, Professor M.D. Nalapat is the editor-in-chief and I was surprised to see this very detailed article that came last Sunday about the United States hand in the overthrow of Sheikh Hasina. This is a very important document. They are saying that this is something that they got straight from the horse's mouth, meaning like from agency, from documents obtained from some different departments in state in uh, Washington, D.C., out of which they have put together this document. And I thought it uh, very fit to kind of show it to you by way of slides what took place. I mean, just to give you an idea, someone told me, someone in the know, that there were 100 people who worked on this in the United States, 100 more in United Kingdom, and perhaps 200 or so in Bangladesh. So this has been in the making for a while. Sheikh Hasina knew it. India knew it. So it's not right when India says that they were taken by surprise. I think there is something there that has happened. Some connected, uh, some connections got broken deliberately. Maybe it was intended to do it that way. Whatever it is, now we are where we are. And India needs to see how best it can help Bangladesh guide through this difficult period. India cannot wish it away because it is surrounding Bangladesh on three sides and a troubled Bangladesh can put out um, refugees in every one of these directions plus the fourth one which is the sea. I have a small slide deck to share with you. Please do like this video and this is a compelling narrative on how the United States plots regime changes. Here we go. United States was behind Hasina's ouster. This is the first uh, video. I'm going to give you another video in a few days time directly showing the role of Hunter Biden in this whole saga. And that is much more, you know, uh, uh, damaging to this family who perhaps now once somebody is a president, they graduate on and become part of the deep state. I don't know. I mean, indications are directly pointing to that because we all now identify Obama as being part of the deep state. Who knows? Maybe Joe Biden or uh, Hunter Biden will also become part of that deep state. Very, very sad state of affairs. So what happened? The plan to remove Sheikh Hasina was hatched in 2019, so five years ago. She had claimed that government-funded agencies were after that. Who were the agencies? The International Republican Institute. Don't confuse this with a party institute. It is not. It is a, based in U.S. and it has been instrumental in uh, bringing about the regime change, not just here, but in Mongolia in 1996, Haiti in 2001, and Uganda in 2021. The document that Sunday Guardian got hold of suggests where the IRI has been involved in regime changes in various countries, with Bangladesh being the most recent example. I'm going to share with you some names and pictures so you have an idea of who are the people in the Department of State or in Washington, D.C. who were associated with this. The IRI was executing broader objectives of the National Endowment for Democracy, NED, and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. So the project was aimed at counterbalancing India's interference in Bangladesh. The IRI stated goal, well, at least India got uh, from $2 billion to $34 billion, the government industry up and running in Bangladesh. I don't know what US has to show for whatever it is that it is pumping money into. Uh, the IRI stated goal is to promote democracy by supporting democratic institutions political parties, civil society, and electoral processes. I am having a wry smile because as soon as their appointed advisor came, all he has been doing is releasing out nefarious terrorist elements into the society. I mean, this doesn't speak very good for what their objectives are. Their objectives and what they do on the ground are exactly 100 degrees opposite. What they say and what they do are 180 degrees opposite. The IRI is one of the four core institutes of the NED, the other ones being National Democratic Institute, NDI, Center for International Private Enterprise, CIPE, and 
solidarity center. NED provides grants for IRI, basically taxpayer money, for projects aimed at strengthening democratic institutions and processes. I can imagine Department of State people watching this video and rolling their eyes saying, yeah, right, this is not taxpayers' dollars. This is coming directly from the Treasury. Of course, if you keep printing money, that's what happens. Um, established in 1983, NED is a private, non-profit organization funded primarily by the U.S. Congress. Where does U.S. Congress get the money from? Taxpayer. It operates independently, receiving funds through the Department of State, a government agency responsible for administering foreign aid and development assistance. In 2019, May, IRI initiated a program called Promoting Accountability, Inclusivity and Resiliency Support Program, PAIRS, after receiving grants from USAID and NED. The program aimed to enhance political participation in Bangladesh and amplify anti-authoritarian voices. The PAIRS program ran for 22 months from March 2019 to Jan 2021. Right through COVID, interestingly, IRI implemented a broad-based social empowerment project to foster citizen-centered political engagement through local and non-traditional forums. These Beltway experts don't understand the consequences of their regime change plots. Today, the blackout in Dhaka is 9 hours and in rural areas, the blackout is 14 hours. And they don't have money to pay the past bills. So I can imagine that pretty soon, they may just completely go black. And for all this, Donald Lew and his cohorts have given 220 million as assistance, or they have promised it. The bills that they are staring at run into millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. Where are they going to pay those uh, bills? When are they going to pay those bills? They issued 11 advocacy grants, that is the IRI, to artists, musicians, performers, or organizations to create 225 art products on political and social issues viewed nearly 400,000 times. It also, IRI supported three civil society organizations representing the LGBTI, you know, the Q is probably become I, Bihari and ethnic communities to train 77 activists and involve 326 citizens in developing 43 policy demand presented to 65 government officials conducted community you, you can see the thing they have done a whole bunch of stuff in the name of trying to make bangladesh a better country 22 month program pairs in 2024 election period they thought that there'll be more violence but there wasn't because bnp sat out the election saying that these elections are going to be rigged this was a ploy to try and discredit the election even before the election took place but luckily for bangladesh not just the awami but a couple of other smaller parties also participated and therefore it kind of made it hard for them to say that the elections were rigged if bnp sits it out too bad i mean if you don't contest in an election you can't say that the election was rigged so iri spare program Noted that COVID-19 pandemic had the potential to destabilize the Hasina government, but this did not occur due to low death rates. This was the interesting thing, that there weren't that many casualties in Bangladesh. The BNP still continues to be marginal, which is why the problem now is that the extremist elements with the help of ISI and perhaps China are taking over Bangladesh. Like, for example, if there is Azan going on, you cannot have Puja going on. And, and all sorts of nonsense. Pairs program remained relevant after the Digital Security Act was passed by Hasina, which curbed social media freedom. The Awami League government used the DSA, that is the one that Digital Security Act, to imprison political opponents, journalists, activists, and citizens who criticize the state's COVID-19 response on social media. The DSA replaced the ICT Act that came in 2013, which had already provided the government with similar powers to regulate online speech. There isn't much freedom of speech in Bangladesh, guys, even before Sheikh Hasina left. IRI's program operated within this restrictive political context, supporting socially conscious artists as they were harder to suppress and could reach a wider audience. Marginalized communities, Biharis, etc., etc., were identified as beneficiaries for advocacy as the government viewed them as non-threatening. The program involved events such as book launches, storytelling, photo exhibitions, 
art exhibitions and so on and so forth and just to try and make it look like they were aiding the causes like arts, culture, it was harmless stuff. Some events were exclusive and attended by US embassy officials impacting 400,000 Bangladesh nationals directly. The organization executed a project from February 21 to September 22 funded by a $900,000 grant from the NED. The project aimed to enhance marginalized voices, particularly youth and women within political debate and decision making. The initiative focused on building the capacity of women, political leaders, elected representatives and candidates for sub-national elections. It also worked on student wings of major political parties to promote inclusive and non-violent political participation. See, the investment starts paying off when the students start writing in the streets. In fact, they also trained uh, people of the Awami League. So, it's, uh, it's, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, we are doing it for everybody. The whole idea was to curb India's influence over Bangladesh. But let's take a look at their report card. Hasn't Bangladesh done extremely well in the last 10 years? Why? Because the Modi government has been encouraging them to give good uh, encouragement for uh, doing garment industry. India sent in its textile company heads who have come and set up factories in Bangladesh. And now up to 12% of the GDP comes from these India-based companies operating out of Bangladesh. 12%. And I'm hearing that many of them are pulling up their... Uh, stakes and returning back to India. They will continue as, as always. There will be a slight difference in price, but that will not uh, stop them from continuing to do what they were doing in Bangladesh, but in India. But will they go back? I doubt it. So this regime change is actually a bad thing because the United States didn't think it through. Like we predicted before, a couple of people may be hoping for some um, promotions showing that they engineered this regime change. But unfortunately, the man on the street is going to suffer, suffer a lot. So there, there's a whole bunch of things that IRI did, uh, Bangladesh strategy uh, and, uh, you know, working with the army, business class, civil society and showing as if Awami was trying to curb them. This is, this is something that's not too hard. You can always go and tell somebody, you know, you would be so much better if somebody this, this, this. And they'll start believing you because it is coming from somebody who's not based in Bangladesh. And they'll say, oh, yeah, this is third party observer who has looked at the thing on the ground and they have made these decisions. Unfortunately, this sort of uh, brainwashing has taken place. It's going to take some time before the Bangladeshi citizen is going to realize that this kind of uh, smoke screen that was attempted is actually harming him more than anyone else. Who were the people? Who were responsible in this? Chris Murphy, Democrat from Connecticut, member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, is sitting on the South Asia Subcommittee. Sumona Guha, South Asia Director at the National Security Council. Donald Liu, you know this man, incoming Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs, SCA State Department. Sarah Margon, incoming Assistant Secretary to the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, DRL. State Department and Francisco Bencosme, Senior Advisor at the Bureau of the East Asian and Pacific Affairs, EAP, State Department, previously covered Bangladesh at Amnesty International. That's the other le left liberal organization. We all know about that. So this is where we stand. This was planned a long time ago. It is like going into the pottery barn and disturbing all the uh, ceramics in there. U.S. has started breaking things inside the shop. Now, who's going to put them back together? You are seeing that slowly but steadily, China through ISI is gaining influence into Bangladesh. And all the money spent, taxpayer money spent in Bangladesh, to what use? Who is going to be held accountable? That's the question that I leave you with. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.